another record day. Another record-breaking day for these markets as we get closer and closer to 20,000 now on the Dow. Are we going to hit the number by the new year? We could. We certainly could. All of this as we get a report showing that barely half of 30-year-olds are earning more than their parents did at that age. What's been going on with this American dream? And can we turn it around right now? I'm joined right now by DGC partner, senior strategist Steve Cortez. You know, I brought that study up, Steve, because I think that this is one of the reasons why people voted for Donald Trump. I think a lot of Americans were very scared about the path we are on economically, and they want to do something and wanted to do something to divert us from basically going into no man's land for their children's sake. Is that fair? Trish, I think it's completely fair and completely accurate. You're exactly right. One of the hallmarks, really, almost the foundation of America, of our culture, is that we've had an inheritance of optimism. We've always believed uh, with, with every justification that our children will live better than we will and their children better than them. Uh, unfortunately, we've broken that chain, at least in terms of expectations, lately. Uh, and that's a tragedy and something that we have to reverse, and we can reverse, by the way. I think this is emblematic of a bigger problem, though, which is that uh, if, you, if you're at the top of the food chain economically, you've had a great century so far in the 2000s if you own a lot of stocks in real estate. Uh, but that's a very small number of people. For most Americans who are strivers, who are wage earners, and most young people fit in that category, this has been a tough slog. You haven't had a pay raise in two decades. And if you don't own assets, you're really struggling just to stay, just to keep pace with where you already are. So we need to reverse that. How do we do it? Tax it, it, cuts, taxes, yeah. deregulation. I hear you. And, and it looks like we're going to get Looks like we're going to get that, but let me let me explore this a little bit more with you, Steve, because what sure. I think has gotten so badly out of whack, and you know, I, I think the income inequality stuff. Um, I'm, I'm not wild about that argument. I think it's a political argument. I think you know, hey, you don't you don't want to be Bangladesh, right? Uh, they have no income inequality in Bangladesh because everybody's just poor. But at the right. same time, we have uh, basically lost, or there's become increasingly this disconnect between labor and capital. And so right. those with capital, they can benefit in an environment that doesn't reward labor at all. And how do we bring that back into sync right now? Right. You know, it's a great question, and I think it's the crux of the Trump ballot revolution, by the way, uh, is that, again, the system that we have constructed, or which I should say Washington, D.C., has largely constructed for its own benefit, is a system of largely crony capitalism, where you're exactly right. It does benefit management, and it does benefit shareholders, for that matter, but not the worker uh, at, the, at the basic levels. And so what can we do to fix that? Better trade deals, smarter trade deals. We need to demand reciprocity with countries okay, like China. That. So, in other words, if we say, okay, you can sell here, but w how does that work? Right. So, in other words, with China, when it comes to trade, and by the way, I think, you know, when the, when the terms are fair, we compete with anyone in the world. The American worker is incredibly productive. So, with China, when we play a home game here in terms of trade, we allow them to bring their full team over. When we have to go and play there, if it's a football game, we say, you know what, you, we'll only play eight players instead of the 11 that we should because they are not open to our products and services anywhere near to the degree to which we are open to theirs. Mm -hmm. So, I think President-elect Trump is going to demand reciprocity. If our markets are open to you, yours have to be open to us. And in that case, the American worker benefits because the American worker will hustle and will compete. Yeah, I, I think that that's the fair and, and the right way to do it. I, you know, I, I got a quick story to tell you and the viewers. Um, you know, there's, there's a, a tire company that operates in China and operates in the Midwest here in the United States. And they're paying the workers about a buck fifty. Uh, in China, they're paying a, sorry, it's a muffler company, and they're paying those workers here in the U.S. $25, $30 plus benefits, etc. But this company uh, decided that, you know what, the workers in the U.S. were that much better. It didn't even matter that you could get workers at a buck fifty because the productivity was so lousy over there in China right. that it negated itself. So I agree with you that people, uh, workers here in the U.S., they, they really represent a lot in the way of productivity, et cetera. I do want to get to this live picture just coming into us right now. Donald Trump's plane has landed. Now, those people have been waiting for quite a while there in Louisiana and Baton Rouge. Uh, they, thousands of them, about 5,000, are waiting for him to come and speak. He was expected to speak a, a while ago, a couple hours ago. Looks like it's finally going to happen now. Uh, any any uh, thoughts on what he should be saying, what he needs to say as he continues this thank you rally tour? Right. Well, Trisha, 
I'm so glad he's doing this. And by the way, I have to say, as somebody who is deeply involved in the campaign, I miss these rallies. I miss these events. So I'm glad that he's still doing some. But here's why I think they're important. Uh, it's not just for show. The American psyche, I think, has been wounded by slow growth. And it's, by the way, not just during this administration of Obama. Same thing happened during Bush. Again, most Americans have had a bad century in the 2000s in, in terms of their economic picture. So I think the psyche is incredibly important here. Part of what Donald Trump is doing is he's firing up confidence. And, and it matters. Uh, you know, policies matter, absolutely, but it also matters animal spirits. The economy is largely a game of confidence. If we can convince people that the future will be brighter uh, for their children, as it always has been in America until recently, if we can convince them of that, then they take risks, then they invest, then they hire people. Uh, so I think this is incredibly important, what he's doing. He's not just traveling around only uh, to rile up crowds. There is some fun and there is certainly some uh, some pageantry to it, but what it's really about, I think, is resuscitating I, American I optimism. You. you know what? That was that was one of the problems I think we've had for the last eight years. I used to say, can Obama just say something a little bit nicer about the economy? Can he make us feel a little bit better? But there was so much hesitation uh, in terms of the policies that he would enact that CEOs just didn't want to invest, and people weren't feeling so good. I can tell you right now, as we look at a market that's about 300 points away from 20,000, uh, a lot of people in corporate America are liking what they are hearing and they are feeling more optimistic so we hope that that optimism continues. Steve, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining today.